with Jesus this morning. Um, the talk that I have to share with you this morning is a, actually a command. And that's why I will sound a bit like a military man in the course of sharing with you. It's a command. And the command says, forward march. So if you tell somebody forward march, are you begging the person to move? It's a command. Forward march. Forward march. That's what I have to share with you this morning. And I say forward march with emphasis that you have got to forward march by force. Okay? Yes. You know something about life? The message of the Lord to the church today is someone, for someone who is stopped at the point in which you think things are not just moving the way you want them to move. Stop at the point in which you have checked it out and you're wondering why are things looking like they are. You feel hot, you feel broken, you feel angry, you feel depressed, you feel bitter about many things, you feel so lazy to even take things off anymore. Everyone here is at one stage or the other of life. Some are in the place of a setback, some have gotten out of the setback. And some are proceeding into a setback. There is no time in life in which there is no movement in our course. Should you stay in that point in which movement is not occurring anymore? No. You sold your phone to pay a debt. And so what? Are they still selling phone in the market? You sold your car to pay up a debt. And so what? Are they still, they still selling new cars in the market? As a matter of fact, even if it was your house you sold, to pay up for a setback that took place in your life. However, I got I got no more new house is sold. You can always rise from that spot to a new spot. So whatever thing that had befallen you at any point in time, I let you know this morning that you got to come out of that setback and move to a new point of life. Whatever has stopped you up until now. The Lord is telling you this morning, forward march. It's enough of staying at that spot and just roaming about that singular spot. Stop giving up your power to move on to the situation that is on hand. The situation at hand is not the one to make you. You are the one to make a difference in the times you live in. That's what Jesus and that's what God told them in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, which is going to be the text that we're going to be reading this morning. Exodus 14, 15. Exodus 14, 15. It does not matter how bad the crisis may be. It does not bad matter, no matter how bad the risk you last took was. It simply says that because you are taking such a risk, you need to move on from where you are. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Why do you cry to me? I want to draw my sermon title from this scripture, from this verse 15. It says, go forward. Tell them to go forward. And I want to bring the message from this chapter. And I'm entitling it, Forward March. Why? Because as a matter of fact, believers are referred to as military and army of the kingdom of God, aren't we? Yes. We're supposed to be army in the kingdom of God. So if we are, and means of God, it simply means we can use the same term for ourselves that we need to get up and forward march. The people of God, even in today's church context, are all liking to the army of God. And as such, and as such, as living army of God, we also need to do what God has told them in this scripture. Sometimes it may seem like we are being per per persuaded and battered on all sides. The Lord is coming to us in the scripture and saying, forward march. You cannot become great without moving forward. There's no way you can become great without moving forward. Staying at the same spot, you will get battered again and again and never have a future. You cannot gather yourself together without making a move. If you don't make a move, you are going to become a person that begins to derogate. You can imagine. If you have water that is stagnant, what happens to that water? It begins to stink. Not only stink, it begins to dry up. Are we here together? It begins to dry up. So 
It simply means if you don't move on, there is a likelihood of you getting to begin to stink. There is a likelihood of you getting to depreciate. There is a likelihood of you getting to even finish over time. Many of us have found ourselves in an unbreakable and unbearable situation in life. You know, I, I, let me give you an example. If you went to, in a desk where you fetch water with clay pots, you know that you watch in your own videos, when they carry clay pots and they go and fetch water from the stream, if the pot broke at the stream, will you sleep at the stream? That's what many of us are doing with our situations. We get to the stream trying to fetch water, and then the pot breaks. And then we cry and make noise. And then we remain at the stream and refuse to go home. That's what many of us are doing about situations that we have found ourselves in. That is not what it should be. He God and led the children of Israel through this situation of life, He can lead you in the times you live in. It means you can be led from the situation in which there are armies running behind you and there is a red sea in front of you. There are armies about to kill you and there is a red sea in front of you. And the Lord is saying, go forward. Then you ask yourself, go forward into what? Go forward into nothingness. Go forward into what? Go forward into the Red Sea in front of me. Go forward into what? Go forward into a situation where I cannot even see what the future looks like. The Bible says, no one that put his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service of the kingdom of God. Never get stuck in what you are going through now. You know the Bible says, you have roamed around this mountain for too long. Enough is enough. Move not toward. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 3. David is a good example of this thing that I am talking about here. It's a very good example of the situation that God is expounding to us this morning. Many times we have chosen not to move forward because we think there are people looking at us. There are people saying things about us. There are people discussing us. You know something? The natural law of life has brought about something, and that is distance. Distance is a natural law of life that separates between two people. If you have created a distance between you and that person that is talking about you, do you know you will not hear what the person is saying anymore? You know? Yes. So that thing means you should move forward away. If you actually forward march, you will not hear those things. Then they will say, he saw his phone, and so. Then they will say, he saw his car, and so. Then they will say, he saw his jewelries, and so. The real question is, are they stopped selling jewelries? Are they stopped selling new phones? Are they stopped selling new cars? You started a business, it didn't work. You borrowed money to do it and it didn't work. And then you are stopped. And then you got to pay the people you borrowed money from. And then you decided to sell some things off and pay them off. And then you are now wondering, I am selling even the things I bought with my money. This is bad life. I agree with you. But must you sleep there? Must you kill yourself there? Must you remain there? I remember some years back, Personal examples now. Some years back, I was running a business. And in that business, I had this equipment in which that was the main source of supply. Of, well, then the business was internet service provider. I was at that time. I was a provider for about 14 cyber cafes from a single spot. And one night, lightning came. And went into that machine. I'm talking about 2000, there about 2002. That equipment was about 4 million at that time. I don't know what the value should be now. It was 4 million at that time. And then there was a thunder strike. And it went straight into this equipment and shattered it. And what happened? I got a call. 
There's no, nothing is working. And I checked, it was all burnt. I took it in my hands. Truth, I shed some tears. 2002, how old was I? Okay, just remove this year from 2002 and subtract it. Help yourself. <laughs> I carried it and I was like, what? And in my living room, I took it home. I believed it would work again. So I took it home, I put it on the center table. And I started praying, oh God, oh God, look at this thing. I borrowed money to buy it. I borrowed money to put it in place. I borrowed money to put that business running. But excuse me, I waited and waited and wondered how I'm going to pick up life anymore. I wondered, I had resigned from where I was working because it was good sales that was coming in. It was good business that was coming in. I was settled with it. And that happened. It was a terrible setback. But what did I do? I had cars parked in my compound. I looked for buyers. I sold so that my business can bounce back. Brothers and sisters, if I did not forward much, I would not be here today. I would be saying this happened and that happened. So I'm talking about you. Maybe you have tried it. You have done all your business plans and foundations. You have planned everything. And then you set it out. And you begin to. And you begin to. And then you saw that, wow, this is a setback. You are not only broke, you are going. And then you start avoiding everybody you owe. And then you refuse to pick all their calls. And then you stop coming to church. And then brothers are looking for you, you are not responding. And then friends are not even finding you anymore. Making matters worse, then you begin to drink alcohol. And then you find yourself in clubs. And then because you get free drinks, and you continue, and on, and on. Brothers and sisters, this morning, the Lord is telling you that person that is in this service. In verse 15 of Exodus chapter 14, God said to Moses, Why cry out to me? Speak to the Israelites. Order them to get moving. Speak to the Israelites. Order them to get moving. That's the message translation of that scripture. That's and I think the King James Version says what it says. Go forward. But God said to Moses, order them to keep moving. Refuse to sit by that broken part. Begin to move. Don't get stuck in any form. Mental blockage can also happen. Don't be blocked mentally. There has to be a moving on. You might not be broke financially. You might not even have lost anything or owing anybody, but you are just blocked in your mental mind on how do I proceed from here. I am lost. I do not know which direction to go anymore. According to Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3 says, move not one. It's enough of roaming around this one. For me to keep hearing what you are saying about me, it means I have not moved on yet. It means I am still on that same situation. It means I am still on that same spot. There is example of people. Don't be afraid. Stand firm and watch God do his work of salvation. For you today, take a good look at the Egyptians today. You're never going to see them anymore. But deceiving yourself, Moses, we want to go back to Egypt. Frustration, frustrated mind, regretting, 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 regretting that why did we even leave that Egypt? Where everything was available, it's only that we are slaves. Where every other thing was available, we could eat. We could do all we had to do, but we are only slaves, right? Look at verse 14. God will fight the battle for you. And you and you, you keep your mouth shut. And then, verse 15, God said to Moses, Why cry out to me? Speak to the Israelites. Order them to get moving. Look at the language that's been spoken there. Look at look, 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 they're looking for options. 
They're looking for a way out. They're looking for the option of returning to where they're coming from. Going back to Egypt to dwell with Egyptians. Brothers and sisters, stop the regret of refusing to take bribe anymore. Stop the regret of refusing to be corrupt anymore. Stop the regret of refusing to take figures anymore. Stop regret of refusing to take money and exchange for what you didn't do right. Stop the regret of refusing to be in the house of a prostitute anymore. Because I've left prostitution, that simply means I'm now regretting that I've left that world. Brothers and sisters, I put it to you that even if you understand this part of the word of God, it simply means move forward. Seek a moving on. Seek a moving on. Don't miss the opportunity to move on today. Some of us have inverted pride. That look, the inverted pride is look, I used to, I used to, me, I used to blow one thousand, I used to blow hundred thousand in a day. See me now. I used to blow hundred thousand. Is that not how some of us say? Me, when they blow hundred thousand per day, see me now. Hundred thousand self, I don't even see this month. Ah! The days when I was doing wrongs. I hear some of those things. So I understand the language. The days when Manga de Pe. The days when. Okay, I'm being this to is what she I have left Egypt. Manga not a pay anymore. I've caught my ties with Manga. I know they do wrongs anymore. I've caught my ties with doing wrongs. Now I'm this spot and I'm looking at the rest in front of me. How do I proceed from here? The Lord says, march forward. Forward, march. You know, moving on is not something that is that easy. Moving on is not something that has to, I said you move on, forward march, and then you just forward march. And that is why I'm going to use this quick practical example. How many of us remember that man called David? How many of us remember that he was by his back only one day and saw one lady by the name Bathsheba? He was supposed to be at war, but he was at home. And then he was at his balcony, and then he saw one lady taking a bath. And then he called his guys, go and get me that lady. And he got him the lady. And then he impregnated the lady. And the lady got pregnant. And then what happened? God told him that he had committed the sin. And then he was pleading that the child that was they were pregnant for should not die. But the child eventually died. Let's read that scripture, a part of it. I'm giving you a brief before we get into the part that I want us to read. So let's see 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Let's read, we'll start to read from verse 15, where the prophets declared what God said to David. Chapter 12 from verse 15. Then Nathan departed to his own house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's widow bore to David. You know, when David was in the midst of his sins, he killed that Uriah, who happens to be the husband of Bathsheba. Okay? That's the story. He killed. So the woman had become a widow because. He went ahead to commit his sin and get more into the sin, the more. He killed the husband of that woman. Now, the child was born and Nathan was sent by God to David. So David was told that that child was going to die. So the child became sick. And then verse 16, David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night repeatedly on the floor. His older house servants arose in the night and went to him to raise up, to raise him up from the floor. But he would not, nor did he eat food with them. 
And on the seventh day, the child died. Maybe someone feared to tell him, because to tell him that the child had died. For they said, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him and he would not listen to our voices. Will he then harm himself if we tell him the child is dead? When the child was not dead, he was not eaten. Now that the child is dead, will he not harm himself? But let's see what David did. Verse 19. But when David saw his servants whispering, he perceived that the child was dead. So he said to them, Is the child dead? And they said, He is. Then David rose from the floor, washed, anointed himself, changed his apparel, and went to the house of the Lord and washed it. Let's read that verse 20 together. That verse 20. Let's read it how together. Let's read it out. So once you go, so David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes, and went into the house of the Lord and washed it. Then he went to his own house, and when he requested, they set food before him, and he ate. Ah, but what did he do? He said, it's time to move on. I prayed about these things should not happen. I have prayed and I have fasted for seven straight days that this child will not die. But the child still died. Uh -huh. The pot is broken already now. And I'm by the side of the stream. Should I now enter the stream because the pot is broken there? That's what David did here. Look at verse 21. People that are around you, all of the people around you, See what they are telling you now, verse 21. Because you have done verse 20, see what happened in verse 21. Then the servant said to him, What is this that you have done, or beg me? Ah, can't you see how bad your situation is? Can't you see how bad your life is? Ah, you fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. What should I do? What should I have done? <laughs> what, what should I have done? <laughs> Did you not know you lost one million? And so? Did you not know that that equipment that is the source of your funding has broken up? And so? Did you not know that you are cut ties with MAGA? And so? Did you not know that you no longer do that dubious act that you used to do? And so? Look at his answer in verse 22. And he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept for I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that a child may leave? Verse 23. And what happened in verse 23? But now he's dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him not finally, but he shall not return to me. And at that pass, I say, bam. That is, the guy get down. The guy got it. And what did David do? Comforted Bathsheba by his wife. Now, if he did not move on, if he did not move on, verse 24 and 25 will not happen. Mm. If David did not move on, 24 and 25 will not happen. So if you don't move on, if you don't get to speak verse 20, 21 to the enemies and 22 to the enemies and 23 to the enemies, verse 24 will not happen. And what happened? Then David comforted Bathsheba his wife and went into her and lay with her. So she bore a son and called his name Solomon. Who did he know Solomon here? Yeah. Will Solomon have been born? If David didn't move on, Solomon would never have come to back. Now the Lord loved him. Look at verse 24 and verse 25. And he sent words by the hand of Nathan, the prophet. So he called his name Jedediah because what now? Beloved of the Lord. Jedediah means beloved, open and beloved. 
Let's look at that verse 25 in Amplified. Good. He sent a message by the hand of Nathan the prophet. And Nathan called the boy's special name, Jebediah, the Lord of the Lord. Because the Lord loved the child. Please, may I ask you if you would have gone to verse 21 25, if you did not speak up and move on. If you refused to pick up and move on, this would never have happened. Solomon stage as a king has never been surpassed by any. Both in sin and in righteousness. You remember that guy? You remember that guy? You remember him? Say something about Solomon. Huh? He has what? Wives and concubines. He has wives and concubines. And then he had the best wisdom. Hmm? He had the best wisdom. He said what? Okay, this is the source of Solomon. Even in the Bible. My brothers and sisters. Where you are right now wasn't where you started from. If you check where you are right now, that wasn't how you started. Yeah. And that wasn't where you started from. Mm -hmm. It means there is something to celebrate oh, yes. about who you are yeah. as a today. There is something that will still be celebrated if you move on from where you are. That's why that man said, sang the song, David himself wrote the song. I will lift up my hands to the hills. Where comes my help? Mm. My help coming from the Lord who makes the heavens and the earth. He shall, he will not suffer my foot, my foot to be moved. You remember that song? Yes. Oh, oh, the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade upon thy right hand. Upon thy right hand. He is my strength. All of my help coming from the Lord. Now, enough of the obvious things that you know. Obviously, you are going through that matter. Obviously, you are in a particular stage of life. So, how do you move on? How do you move on? How do you move on? From this scripture of Exodus that we are reading, in chapter 14 of Exodus, we saw that the people were told not to be afraid. In verse 13. Can we go to Exodus 14? Look at that verse 13. There is a command that was given there. The commandment of God. There was a statement. And the statement is that you should fear not. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them no more. These people have the mindset of slaves. So, you telling them to fear not is just to address the mindset of slave, the slavery mentality that's in their mind. They have forgotten how to hope again because they are the slaves. They have forgotten how to hope again. How can I hope again? When I am in captivity. So they want to return to captivity because all life they have been slaves. All life they have been slaves, so it's difficult to rise above slavery mentality. They saw a dark cloud beyond every silver lining that comes their way. And that is what God was trying to address here when he says, Fear not. Because the life has been used to fear. Their life has been used to be beaten. Their life has been used to be battered. Their life has been used to be disciplined at all times. So the Lord was trying to, uh, to, to address that pessimistic nature of their mind. So he says, fear not. So the Lord is telling you, number one, to be able to forward march, fear not. I demand, he's saying here, that you should 
Fear not from no slavery mentality that's at the back of your mind. That I can never make it again. That I have failed again and again. I am not able to rise above this point. I am not able to go beyond God. Now think it again, my friends. You have been slaves for all 400 years. That's what the situation is in this scripture. Slaves for 400 years. Imagine how it is easy to get that get out of it in the mind. Someone that has been slaves for 400 years. How is it easy for that person to just say, well, I am free. I am free. It requires a mental adjustment. i give an example. You put, um, in those days, we used to play when I was in the village. It doesn't look like I've been in the village, right? Okay. okay. If you like, if you like, think so. When I was back, <laughs> we used to, you, I mean, I, this, not, how many people have seen grasshoppers before? Uh, yes. <laughs> Goodness, where did you see grasshoppers? <laughs> how many people have seen grasshoppers before? Real. Yes. Not inside TV, I'm saying real. Yes, Real life. Grasshopper, grasshopper. That doesn't look like this guy. I want to know what to call grasshopper. Maybe, maybe, maybe grasshopper in the mind. Maybe or maybe. A, a, please, I want to know what that does it look like this guy. Like? Goodness, this guy grasshopper. Oh. <laughs> he can fly. He can fly. Yeah. Many things can fly. <laughs> Green. 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 Okay. 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 Let's accept that description. For those of you who have not seen grasshopper before, you can Google the other service. Yeah. I tell you what grasshopper looks like. <laughs> but this is a grasshopper. If you put grasshopper in a bucket, huh? It ordinarily can fly out on its own. But if you put a cover on top of it, huh? It will jump and then to fly again and again. And that stain that is at the top of it has hindered it from flying out, right? Yeah. If you remove that thing forever, it will be difficult for that grasshopper to think anything that will be removed. Because it has seen that the limit has been created. The slavery, even very simple, put a bird in a cage for so long and open the door, it will remain in the cage. That is slavery. So now tell me how easy it is for 400 having been slaves for them to just see rest in front of them and they just say fear not and they ah, fear not. It's very difficult. So the heavens will perform a surgical operation on our mind and will help us to come out of pessimism that we might be able to be optimistic about the future that God has proposed in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. God who has set you free has made you free indeed. Whatsoever the Lord has set free shall be free indeed. The freedom of the Lord has been given to you to come out of captivity and be free. It's often said that because you have been enslaved in the mind, it's going to affect how you live your life. So the Lord is saying, fear not. Fear not. Be still. Be confident. Be undismayed. And see the salvation of the Lord. And see the salvation of the Lord. There is confidence found in this statement that Moses made. He said, the Lord says, fear not. And be confident. So I'm announcing to you today for you to move forward, march, fear not. For you to forward, march, regain your confidence. For you to forward, march, be undismayed. Be firm. And then, verse 14. What happened in verse 14? The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Ah! That one is another hard situation. 400 years he hasn't fought for me in Egypt. 400 years he hasn't done this just for you in the natural today. All these days he has not solved this problem. All these days I am still remembering on this matter. All these days, ah, 
Brothers and sisters, consider the almighty God's identity and see how mighty he is. There is the Lord Jehovah. He is a self-existence God. He is the eternal Jehovah. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. He is the almighty. Huh? He is the one that said, let there be. And none can question him. He is the one that has that breath and breath into man. And that's where we are and like to today. So, if that Yahweh says, fear not, the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them over. Consider his almightiness as his intention to be to make you free. Huh? That says the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Amen. The Lord shall fight for you. He said, by commanding the wind of heaven to even supply, he can supply for you. The same Lord who was able to command the winds and the waves and calm down the, 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 the troubling water. When Jesus Christ said, what is still? The same God can speak into that situation, that matter, that circumstance. And what will happen? You shall be still in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 15. Which is the place that we that we focus on today? The Lord said to Moses, "Why are you crying? Why? Why? Speak to the children of Israel." And in verse sixteen, He says, "Lift thou up the rod in thy hand, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry land." <laughs> God's instruction is only possible when you are not hesitant, when you are not hesitating on what he says you should do. That's when you can see a result. Now imagine in verse 15, he says in verse 15 that, okay, the Lord is saying, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Tell the people of Israel to go forward, go forward into what that. Go forward, go forward into a blockage. Go forward, go forward into an obvious crisis. Go forward, go forward into mountain of water. And remember, the Egyptians are coming behind them. So, because you do not have a place to return to, you must follow the instructions. Because you do not have the option of Egypt is not an option. The only option available is the option to move forward. And that's why God told Moses, stretch up the rod. And immediately, I know it's hard to imagine what must have been come. If, I had to, if it was you, imagine what could be going through your mind. Ah, what's wrong with this? See Moses, oh, what are they from to Moses? You don't see this thing? Jose, let's beg these people back home. Let's just beg them. Let's just beg. You know, let's just, Please. you know, let people beg them. I just say, we are sorry. In fact, already, I know some of you that say, now Moses put on inside this trouble, we are sorry, Egyptians. So, now Moses, they go, we are very sorry. You know? <laughs> God's instruction is plainly provided, is plainly providing a hope. For them. Situation may seem hopeless today. This message is to provide hope for you again. God needs a man that can hope again for him to walk in their lives. If you can hope again, it will turn things around. Amen. If you can hope again, it will change the circumstance. Amen. You know, Look at that verse 16. The plan of God in this whole matter is just for someone to take a piece of wood and stretch it to the water. Ah! Show the mini shall. That's what it gets. You know, you can't fathom it. There's so many unfathomable things that the heavens has provided as what you should see because of what he wants to do. The plan was just to take a piece of wood. 
piece of wood and stretch it. The plan was to have the man stretch out his hands. The plan was that these people were delivered through a mighty miracle. The heavens want to work a miracle that will bewilder the world in your life. He wants to show, he wants to show himself to the world through you. He wants to show the world that he is a God that answers prayers. The hopeless death would have moved out of the life of these children of Israel, maybe by other means. But heavens wanted to show up in this manner. And he says, stretch a wood, stretch a wood. Therefore, today, what's he asking you to do for you to move? As simple. Remember the story on that fateful day when Jesus was going to enter into Jerusalem, which is what is being commemorated today all over this triumphant entry into Jerusalem. What happened? He asked the children, the, the, the disciples, to go and pick a donkey that has never been risen on. And when they got that donkey and brought to him, what did he say? If the owner of the donkey asks you, why are you picking it? What should you tell the owner? The Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of your life. That's why he's bringing you about hope in it today. The Lord has need of your life. That's why he is telling you, I want to surprise you in this little manner. The instruction of God for you today is go forward. The instruction of the Lord for you today is forward march. And if that's God's instruction in our lives, then we will give all. He has given us this message this morning that we might follow that instruction. Our problem often is that we get settled where we are rather than move on. I need to let you know that no matter how rich you are today, you can be richer. Yes. Yes, so. I need to let you know today as well that no matter how easy things are for you right now, it can be easier. And therefore, the heavens the saints move forward. The heavens want to brag with your life. The heavens want to brag with your life. Isaiah 64, no 46, while I'm trying to close now. Isaiah 46, while we rise up on our feet. 46 verses 9 and 10. That is the promise of the Lord for you today. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Because the Lord wants to brag in your life. He wants to tell the world, he wants to brandish you to the world. Now see who he was, see who he is today. He wants to brag with your life, see what he used to be, see what he has become. He wants to brag in your life, he sold his phone, but look at what he is now. He wants to brag with your life, he sold his cars, but see what he is today. He wants to brag with your life, he sold his joy, but see what he is today. See that, remember the former things of old. You are supposed to be on your feet now, so rise up. Can you open and amplify for us? I want us to really amplify. And the lightning stone, I will lift up my head to the east from where comes my help. My help coming from the Lord. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10. So let's read together. Honestly, remember the former things which I did of old. For I am God, and there is no one else. I am God, and there is none like me. Look at verse 10. Declaring the end and the result from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand i will do all my pleasure and purpose the heavens was to do all this pleasure and purpose in your life look at verse 11 and 13 to 13. let's go to verse 11 go to verse 11 verse 11 we'll read up the 13. calling the revenue board from the east the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Yes, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have proposed it and I will do it. Look at verse 12. Listen to me, for Steve Atten, and you who are 
and lost hearts. You who are far from righteousness, from unrighteousness and right standing with God, and from his righteousness, deliverance. And verse 13. Bring near my righteousness in the deliverance of Israel. It will not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will put salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Yes, give salvation in Zion and my glory to Israel. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. God can never be stranded. Oh, yes. And if that means he is your God, you can never be stranded. If you are the crossroad, there is hope for you. Now begin to ask God this morning. Everlasting Father, I ask you this morning, let all my help come from you. Let my help come from you. I lift up my head to the hills from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer my food and my food to be moved in the name of Jesus. That song together while we're praying, just a praying, just a praying, just a praying.